Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, the show where we quite literally plug you in to the best motorhomes, campsites and technical advice. On tonight's show we review the Benamar Maleo 313, visit Cofton Country Holiday Park and have a look at an exciting new low profile from Detlefs. Are you looking for a fully winterized motorhome with a double floor, but you can't be bothered with an A-Class? You'd rather have a semi-integrated or low-profile model? Well, Detlef's rebooted Esprit range could be the answer, and perhaps in the shape of the T7150, a brand new layout for 2016. This new model is based on the Fiat Ducato and is 7.63 meters long. That means there's plenty of room inside, which is good news, and there's also an extra wide habitation door for easy access. Another interesting design point to these little running boards under the cab doors and there's also a bit of checker plate, very cool indeed. And there's also a garage that can be accessed from both sides of the vehicle. The rebooted Esprit was the main event at Detlef's 2016 model year preview and for good reason. As you can see, these vans are pretty special inside. From this very comfortable seating with the radius edges to the amazing cabinet work which is extremely unified and a beautiful run of wood going all the way across. The other ambience is spot on as well, including overlocker LED lighting. And just look at the panoramic skylight above the driver's cab. Now another distinctive feature and unique to Detlefs are the control panels. They don't have some fancy all-in-one thing, a touchscreen panel, anything like that. No, they keep it decidedly old school. They have three separate dials. There's a clock on the right hand side, your water levels in the middle, and the one on the left is all your electricity information. Very good indeed. And how's this for a quirky design feature? Just when you're expecting a conventional overhead locker, you'll find this one is actually split into two. Push for the top and pull for the bottom. Genius! And when it's time for cooking, then this midships galley is the center of the operation. Sure, it's pretty compact, but just look at the design work that's gone into it. This lovely worktop with this great edge, the overall ambience, very good indeed. Equipment-wise, you get three gas burners under a split level cover, a sink and a tech tower, which is an oven and grill, and a fridge with a separate freezer compartment. Storage-wise, there are plenty of options, from this large overhead locker to these cupboards and drawers under the worktop. Hey, they don't seem to open. There's a reason for that. It's because they've got central locking. To release them, you just press this switch. Moving forward into the washroom, as you can see, it's split across the vehicle. You have the vanity unit and the cassette loo on this side, and on the other side, you have the shower compartment. In the middle, you have this rather attractive plinth with a half-length mirror with ambient lighting framing it on either side, a very pleasing effect. There's also plenty of space to get dressed in here and for maximum privacy, you can close the washroom off using the three sliding doors. I could have saved the best till last with this super comfortable rear bedroom with its commodious island bed. The chief advantage of which, of course, is the fact that you can get to and from the washroom without disturbing your partner. Another thing to note is there's no step up into the bedroom. The whole length of this van is on one level, which is fantastic for clumsy people like me because there's nothing to trip over. Another interesting point in the bathroom is that you can see why the bulkhead has been fitted because in the bedroom side of it, it's the anchoring point for the home cinema system. Now, where's that box set? Designated drivers don't get much time to watch DVDs, of course. They're normally very busy in the cab. And it's a very pleasant cab too. Italian seats with very nice upholstery, comfortable. Also space for a radio, it's not fitted, but check out these speakers on the dash. And also, most vans will come with a 130 bhp engine and six speed manual, but our test unit has the 150 bhp version with Fiat Comfortmatic transmission. And for maximum comfort, you get automatic air conditioning, something most notably found on an A-Class. The Esprit T7150 DBT will cost you £64,990. With an MTPLM of 3,850 kilograms, you'll need a C1 in your driving license to drive it. Now, it's a pretty good van as we've seen. Fantastic design cues inside, some great styling and some ingenious thinking, particularly liking that central locking. 
The payload is just south of 700 kilograms, so there's plenty of space for your kit and caboodle, as we've seen. Now, some may say esprit de corps. I say esprit corps. What a cracking van. We are Cofton Country Holidays, based in Dawlish in South Devon. We're a holiday park catering for touring, camping, holiday homes, luxury cottages and apartments. Um, facilities on site, we've got an outdoor heated pool that's open in the summer season, an indoor heated pool that's open all year round with a sauna and steam room. Uh, we have a cafe on site, again that's open through the winter as well as, as, well as the summer. We have three children's play areas on site, catering for all ages, one of which is a woodland invention play area with a zip wire. Uh, for the adults, there's coarse fishing on site. We have a variety of accommodation available on site, uh, from touring and camping, with hard standing and super pitches, as, as well as the grass pitches. Uh, we also offer holiday homes, which range from uh, smaller two bedroom units, uh, right up to three bedrooms for families. Um, we have cottages on site, that we've just upgraded. Um, they're two and four bedroom cottages for four to six people. We also have the Warren Retreat uh, where we offer the entertainment. Um, that's open every day during the summer season uh, with entertainment on in the evening, anything from bingo to cabaret acts. Uh, we offer food down there as well, um, a delicious Sunday carvery every Sunday throughout the year as well. Adjacent to the swimming pool patio, we have our traditional swan pub uh, with a very cosy feel for that ideal quiet drink or evening meal. All of our food on site is locally sourced and cooked by our talented chefs in our kitchen, freshly to order. Also on site, we have our park shop, offering all the essentials you can think of. Uh, we have an arcade with a variety of different machines, ideal to keep the children entertained. Um, we even have 10 pin bowling and pool tables. On a nice day like today, you can visit the donkeys. We also have woodland walks on site. When you're touring and camping on site, uh, not only do you have your usual water and waste disposal facilities, we've got heated toilet blocks, showers with plenty of hot water, private wash cubicles, and disabled bathrooms and dedicated family bathrooms too. There's lots to see and do in the local area. Dawlish is just a few miles away where you can go and visit the historic Black Swans. Uh, from the park, you can walk to Dawlish Warren Beach. Um, that takes about 40 minutes, but you can also take your car down. There's also Painting Zoo, an ideal family day out. And just down the road from us is the historic Powderham Castle. Uh, we like coming down here. We've been coming for about seven years. Uh, the children really like it down here. They're just uh, off on their bikes around the park. Got the outside pool in the summer, which is nice, and the indoor when it's a bit wet, like today has been a bit so far. Um, but no, it's a really nice park, nice and clean and fresh and nice walks. We come here fairly often because we think it's an absolutely marvellous facility to have on one's doorstep. And although we have a camper van, we don't bring that here, but the pool and the facilities and the special events they have here are just fantastic. We can't think of anywhere better, quite honestly. As I say, although we're local, it's as good as it gets. Marvellous place to visit. Should you be looking for some top tips whilst you're staying with us, um, my main one would be that you don't need to use your car whilst you're on holiday. We've got the bus route just on the entrance to the park uh, that can take you down to Torquay um, and up to Exeter. We're also not far from the train station that goes down to Paynton as well. Um, bring your bikes with you. We've got the cycle route, which is family friendly, right on our doorstep. It's such a fantastic facility and will be fun for all the family. Spanish brand Benamar goes from strength to strength in Britain. Originally, five models were imported by Marquis Leisure, and now that number has risen to ten, including three dedicated family-friendly layouts, one of which, the 313, is very exciting indeed. The unique selling point of this model is the fact that it's 5.99 metres long, and there are five places to sleep, so that's no mean feat in anyone's book. Based on the Fiat Ducato with a 3,500 kilogram chassis, Marquis has up spec the extras as always, so you have a 150 bhp engine, an external gas point, colour reversing camera and fixing points for a bike rack. 
The midship's lounge is very comfortable, and it really looks the part too, with this sharp continental design that Benamar does very well indeed. The table extends over to the other side of the vehicle, which is a good touch, and if you're wondering where to sleep, there's a double bed above the cab, a pair of bunks at the rear, and another bed right here. Ambient lighting floods in from literally everywhere, thanks to the window behind me to a rather large roof light up above. Spain's illustrious contribution to world cuisine includes such delicacies as paella, tapas and cava. Benemar's gift to British buyers includes a fully formed kitchen, so we have a cooker with dual fuel, gas and electric, a combination oven and grill, a nice deep round sink, a microwave oven and a fridge with a separate freezer compartment. You also have deep overhead lockers and above them restraining rails so you can keep everyday items exactly where you need them. Other storage places of note include this wardrobe on the left of the habitation door as you walk in, plus a drawer underneath. You can also load some personal effects under the rear bunks, which is pretty cool too. The space-saving offside washroom is a real achievement. Okay, it's small, but when I first stepped inside, I thought I was in a boutique hotel. The designers have made a great use of the available space. The floor is shared between the loo and the shower, that's no problem. There's a half-length mirror and the shower attachment actually comes out from the wash basin. A roof light will rid steam and the condensation in seconds, and there's also a window on the side of the van. You'll be pleased to know it's opaque. And above that, you have a practical storage locker. Now, Marquis has thoughtfully upgraded the spec of the engine to 150 bhp, which on a van of this size makes it very lively indeed. If you're wondering about the gearbox, it's a six-speed manual. What else? Other great things I love about the cab are a DAB radio with connectivity for your devices, Bluetooth and USB, and there's also an auxiliary line in. There are also pleated cassette blinds for the windscreen and the side doors, and on this particular vehicle, some added fear extras have included traction control, ESC, and hill descent, all for just under 500 pounds. The five berth Benamar Maleo 313 will set you back 46,723 pounds on the road. At 5.99 metres long, it certainly packs a lot in for a family van. Now the payload is 500 kilograms, but you can have the MTPLM upgraded to 3,650 kilograms free of charge as long as you've got C1 on your driving licence. Something to think about. And don't forget the habitation door is on the UK near side because the Benamar Maleo is one of very few imported ranges to offer this feature. Now I don't know about you, but that's enough to put the bubbles in anyone's carver. Now who wouldn't be interested in a German built motorhome with 10,000 euros worth of added extras thrown in on the windscreen price? Well, that's what you can have with the Hobby Optima's Deluxe Edition, which does exactly what it says. It throws in three different options packs included in the on the road price. Fantastic. We're gonna get on and look at all of those in due course. But in the meantime, I'd just like to alert you to this rather fabulous habitation door. It's quite wide, it has a high security lock, but also, it makes a very pleasing sound when you close it. In fact, I'd like to hear that again. Awesome. Now, another standout feature of this van is a slide out gas locker on the side. To use it, you push up here, pull it out, and you can load your gas lockers at waist height. How good is that? You also get a rather large garage, which is accessed from both sides of the vehicle. And on this particular unit, you get the premium rear end. And let's face it, who doesn't like one of those? The Optima Deluxe specification includes three options packs. You get the Deluxe pack, the chassis pack, and the multimedia pack. Still with me? Now the dealer has added the premium pack and upgraded the engine in this particular van to the 150 bhp option. The on the road price is just under 55,000 pounds, so everything that we see in this van is included for that price. What do we have here then? We have a half net that can seat five thanks to rotating cab seats, a jump seat over here, and a table with a movable section. The wood finish is extremely upmarket, very premium in fact. And also the control panel above the door is the latest technology, a TFT touchscreen with a couple of user definable settings. You could leave the lights on an ambient setting or a full setting for example, and just switch between them by pressing a button. The midship's kitchen is compact, but it's chock full of interesting design features. How about this? You can turn the lights on and off using these touch buttons here. 
Hours of fun for all the family. I also like the way that they've integrated the power sockets in the window surround so they're not fouling the worktop. And talking about the worktop, it's really well insulated with this little rail here forging the join between the worktop and the wood next to it. There's also a timbre door in the middle, which is really cool, in between the twin overhead lockers. And also you have an extractor fan down below a dual fuel fridge with separate freezer compartment. And next to that, some soft closing drawers with an extremely pleasing action. And I haven't even mentioned the three gas burners and the sink. And there's more clever thinking in the washroom, or should I say wet room, because the shower shares the floor tray with the loo. Another good thing is this large bifold door that opens out to join up with the timbre door to protect the rest of the washroom from spray. Very clever indeed. There's also plenty of task lights and a really good mirror. And also a function that you don't see that often is this incredible washing line that pulls across from one side and hooks into this receiver on the other so you can dry your wet clothes. Very good. The on-trend twin fixed single beds are the order of the day here in the rear bedroom and they're very comfortable too cold foam mattresses of 2 meters and 1.9 meters long for anyone that's interested in the dimensions. Plenty of natural light can flood into this space from windows on the side, the roof light up above, and for the evenings you have the benefit of LED lighting up here in the ceiling. Now you can of course make this space into a double bed by infilling this section here with a wooden infill and some filler cushions. That's an optional extra and could be popular with some buyers. The two berth Hobby Optima Deluxe V65GE will cost you just under £55,000 on the road if you have it in this configuration. Normally it's £52,995. Now some numbers to run. It's based on the Fiat Ducato with a 3,500kg chassis with a payload of 548kg, so very respectable. It's 6.7 metres long, you'll need a reasonable driveway to put it on and don't forget that the habitation door is on the UK offside. So take care when disgorging passengers on UK roads. Now whatever your view about a van that has 10,000 euros worth of added extras thrown in for free, some may say it sounds too good to be true. I take a different view. It is what it is, where it is a super desirable motorhome. Hello, I'm Dave Newell. Welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to talk about leisure batteries. We have four main types of leisure batteries in common use in motorhomes. Open lead acid, seal lead acid, AGM and gel. The main differences are the open lead acid, as the name implies, has open cells with a removable cap so you can top up the electrolyte as required. Seal lead acid is very similar except the cells are sealed and maintenance free so there's no topping up required. AGM, similar construction but the plates inside are constructed on a fiberglass frame that absorbs the electrolyte so they're spill proof. Again maintenance free, no topping up required and the gel where the electrolyte is actually in the form of a gel paste. These two are completely safe, you can tip them over, there's nothing to leak out. The other major difference is the wet lead acids and the AGM to some extent are safe to be discharged down to about 50% on a regular basis and recharged. The AGM can go a little bit deeper typically. The gel batteries can typically go to 80% discharge before being recharged without harming them. The Lead acids and the AGM can supply higher currents than the gel without harming them. Also, they can take a higher charging current than the, than the gel. The lead acid batteries are ideal if you're camping on hookup sites mostly because of the, the shallower 50% discharge rate available. You won't harm them because you'll be on hookup most of the time. They will supply the power you need for short periods, the odd night or two without doing them any harm. If you're going to be camping off-grid, as it's often referred to these days, then the AGM and the gel batteries are better suited to it. One of the best ways of killing a battery is not recharging it properly or quickly. When you've been using a battery and it's depleted, you need to recharge it as soon as possible. Leaving a battery in a discharged state will cause permanent damage to the battery. Onboard charging systems in most motorhomes consist of three types. Mains charging, where you're on hookup, the mains charger will charge the batteries and also provide you 12 volt power direct for your equipment. Um, 
They can also be charged when you're driving. The alternator of the vehicle is usually set up with what's called a split charge system, so that when the engine's running, it's providing charge to the leisure batteries. A lot of the very basic systems will start off with a high current but rapidly drop off to a very small trickle charge. So it will take quite a while for them to recharge fully via the engine. Unless you have a battery to battery system fitted, what that does is it fools the alternator into giving higher output current for a longer period so the charge goes into the batteries faster. If you're doing a lot of wild camping off grid, then a battery to battery charger may well be a good addition to your setup. You can have multiple batteries. Typically, motorhomes come from the manufacturers with just one battery fitted. Um, UK motorhomes tend to be the lead acid types. Some will use AGMs. Very few British vans come with gel. A lot of the German and Continental vans come with gel. Um, but the gel are much more expensive. Typically, 100 amp hour open lead acid battery, you're looking around about 100 pounds for a reasonable quality one. A gel battery of a similar capacity, you're typically looking three to 400 pounds. So broadly speaking, if you're camping mostly on hookup sites, but with the occasional night or two away from hookup, the lead acid types will do you fine. AGM, good batteries. If you're camping more off grid for longer periods, a week or more, then the AGM or even the gel are much better suited to it. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you again next time. Adria Matrix lovers rejoice. The Slovenian manufacturer has released two new models for 2016, including the 670SC, which has a fantastic island bed. As part of updates for the sixth generation Fiat Ducato cab, which arrived in the 2015 season, the headroom in these rear bedrooms was increased by 60 centimetres. So there's plenty of room for really tall people. Another great feature, you get your own wardrobe and a light comes on when you open it. But that's not quite the full picture for the rear end storage. You see, another advantage of this layout is you get that super wide rear garage under the bed, which is great for all you leisure fiends taking all that kind of kit and caboodle with you. This bed also lifts up. It's hinged at the far end, so you can tip it up to access the water tank taps and also load some items in from the top. Hello. Now, another great boon of this layout is a washroom that's so good they've put it in twice, one on each side of the vehicle. The one on this offside has the uh, swivel loo, the vanity unit and a very clever arrangement with a sliding mirror. You just release a positive catch on what you think is the cabinet and slide the mirror over. Ingenious. On the other side of the vehicle you'll find what some people call the exhibitionist shower and for good reason. You see you're fully overlooked if anyone else is in the bedroom but you can hide your modesty with a bifold door and a sliding screen. Some motorhomes don't offer much in the way of dressing areas, but one advantage of this particular layout is with its open plan, you can use the foot of the bed as a clothes horse. You can grab all your items and stand here to get dressed. And don't worry about any nosy parkers looking in from the front of the van because there's a solution for them. You can just slide this door right across. Now a continental L-shaped kitchen is obviously a classic of design and this one certainly looks the part with that illuminated splashback and everything nicely integrated. But I know from experience that this kind of kitchen you really have to keep on top of what you're doing. You can't let anything accumulate because there isn't masses of workspace. You put a couple of things left out, you can't open the lids to access the gas. And ditto the sink, it'll fill up in no time with dirty pots and pans so you might want to try to keep on top of that washing up. You also get a combination oven and grill and some decent storage under the worktop plus two overhead lockers. On the other side you have a 150 litre fridge with a separate freezer compartment and a cupboard above where you'd imagine that a microwave would go which is in fact taken up with a TV stand and the connections for the magic lantern. And below the TV cupboard you'll find this very natty control panel made in Italy so obviously very cutting edge design, great to use and looks the part when you have people around to look at your van. Next to that you'll find the Truma Combi Controller which is iNet ready. Fit the iNet box and you can control your space and water heating from any portable device that has Bluetooth. And at the other end of the control panel is the switch for the drop down electric bed. Now with the bed safely raised up out of the way you get this super sociable lounge that can seat up to six people. It's absolutely fantastic. The ambience is spot on. Natural light from either side, through the cab, and from that amazing roof light up above the driver's seat. And in case that's not enough, there are plenty of ambient lighting options too. Overlocker lighting, 
LED lights in the underside of the bed, and my particular favourite are these little touch lights here, which will keep the little ones amused for days on end. Now the Matrix's cab is a very pleasant place to be. Of course, I wouldn't recommend swivelling your chair when you're driving, because obviously it must be locked in the forward position. Now this particular van is fitted with the driver's pack of added extras. So you have a passenger airbag and chrome rings around the dials are just two functions that come from there. And cruise control, so you can stay on top of your speed on the motorway. You also get techno trim around the heating vents, which do look quite cool, but I find they reflect a little off the windscreen when you're driving. A couple of seasons ago, Adria introduced this media wall to great fanfare, and it does exactly what it says. You can put a mobile device like a phone or a tablet in this little recess, and you can plug it into USB to charge it up, or maybe even watch something while you're in the lounge. The Matrix Plus 670SC will cost you £56,090. It's 3,500 kilograms, so anyone in the family can drive it on an ordinary car licence. The payload is just under 450 kilograms, so fairly meaningful for all your touring needs. Now, at seven and a half metres long, this isn't something you're going to fit on a small driveway. And the pronounced rear overhang means you'll have to take care on those ferry ramps. So it's that and the fact that the habitation door is on the UK offside that are the only slight negatives I can think of with this particular van. Because this Matrix 670SC has many plus points going for it. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show. We'll be back soon with some more motorhome and campsite reviews, plus some technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter, or the practicalmotorhome.com website. Until next time then, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.